digital circuits layer of abstraction that you see uh, on the hierarchy here. So after this point, uh, we are going to talk a little bit more about transistors, of course. We're going to build on the last video. But after this point, uh, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time, in fact, we're not really going to spend any time on these bottom three layers uh, of abstraction here. The whole point of getting to this digital circuit layer is so that we no longer have to worry about these bottom three layers anymore. We've, we've removed these layers of complexity from the equation, and now we are, um, uh, that allows us to focus on the things that we care about in this course which are digital circuits, logic, uh, computer architectures, etc. So from here on out, we're going to be living in these layers of abstraction up here. right? That's going to be uh, the topic of the rest of the course. So in our last video, we saw transistors, and we saw how they work um, from a physical perspective. right? Electrons current flowing through, um, basically treating the transistors as switches. Now we want to apply this to digital logic, which I'm sure you were all introduced to digital logic uh, in the introductory class. So you saw things like ands and ors um, and nots, right? And with those particular um, logic functions, we can do things like add numbers together. We can do things like store information. Uh, we can do things like determine what operations should be performed next on a particular computer. Um, so those logic functions, while very, very simple, uh, can be built up to, to do some very, very complex operations on a computer. Um, so they're a very, very important part of not just this class, but of computing um, in general. So let's take a look at how we can use transistors to start to piece together um, these logic gates um, that are the building blocks of our computer. Here's an example of two transistors, right? put together. You can see at the top we have a PMOS transistor. I know it's a PMOS again because there's a little circle here on the gate. And down here at the bottom you see I've got an NMOS transistor. I know it's an NMOS because that little circle is not there. In addition, at the top here we have a positive voltage, right? And at the bottom we have ground. So there's a path actually from this positive voltage to ground through the sources and drains of these transistors. Notice that the gates are not connected to the sources and drains at all. It's not really necessary, at least not for this particular example, for the gates to be connected to the rest of the circuit. There's sort of a division there between the gates and the sources and the drains. So on the left side here, the label marked A, that's going to be our input. And on the right side at the value marked Y, that's going to be our output of this particular circuit. Again, we're dealing with binary. So our input basically consists of two values, 0, which is a 0 voltage, or 1, which is some positive voltage. right? Um, so if we look at the case where our input is 0, where there is a, a 0 voltage applied to our input, notice what happens. That 0 voltage is attached to the gates of each of these transistors. When zero voltage is applied to an NMOS transistor, the NMOS transistor is essentially off. The switch is in the off position, which means that no current can flow through this transistor. This bottom half is effectively off. It's not in use. When zero voltage is applied to the gate of a PMOS transistor, it's on. So current can flow from um, the source to the drain. And so you'll see that that's what's happening in this particular case. This positive voltage, this binary 1 voltage, is flowing through the PMOS transistor to the output. It's not going to ground, remember, because this transistor is off. It's effectively off. So that's what happens when the input is 0, the output is 1. Now if we look at the other case, when the output is 1, the opposite happens. The PMOS now is going to be off. The PMOS transistor will be off when a positive voltage is applied, so nothing can flow through it. it. The switch is in the off position. But the NMOS will activate. The NMOS will be switched on, which allows current to flow. And what that means, then, is that the output is directly connected to ground, directly connected to a zero voltage, which means that the output of our circuit is going to be zero. So what we have here is a circuit that takes our input and flips it. If I put a 0 in for, to my input, the PMOS will be on and the output will be 1. If I put a 1 in to my input, the NMOS will be on and the output will be 0. 
So whatever I put in, I get the opposite of that as my output. This is how a NOT gate is constructed. If you remember from computer science, a NOT just takes a Boolean value, right? A true or false value, a 1 or a 0 value, and it flips it. It makes it the opposite. So here we're taking in false and we get true back out, or we're taking in true and we get false back out. This is how we construct a NOT gate, a NOT logic gate. This is constructed of two distinct pieces. You'll see uh, when you're looking at how gates are constructed, like in the textbook, for example, there's an, uh, an additional example of how gates are constructed. You'll always see PMOS transistors at the top, and you'll always see NMOS transistors at the bottom. Um, so this section of PMOS transistors, that's called the pull-up network. Reason being that when those transistors are on, it's going to pull the output up to a positive voltage, to a positive, um, to a binary one. And then the NMOS transistors down here at the bottom, the collection of NMOS transistors, is called the pull-down network. Because when those transistors are on, it's going to pull the output down towards ground. They will never be on at the same time at least not within a, uh, within a single logic gate. So either the pull-up network is, is activated, pulling it up to 1, or the pull-down network is activated, pulling it down to a binary 0. Right? And every logic gate that we talk about in this class is going to consist of those two parts, a pull-up network comprised of PMOS transistors and a pull-down network comprised of NMOS transistors. So the other logic gates that are worth talking about, you see on this particular slide, you've also seen these logic gates before in, in 131 uh, when you learned Java. Right? But the difference here, I want to uh, reiterate, is, is that these are actually in hardware that we're talking about now. Java is, a, is software. Java is code. Right? These are actually in hardware. These are actually physical gates that exist. Um, so here we see an AND gate, an OR gate, you may not have seen uh, an exclusive OR gate, right? That's what this third one is. And then the inverter or the NOT gate, right? So AND, OR, and inverter, I expect you to have seen those before. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over those. I will briefly go over exclusive ORs because I'm not entirely sure that you've seen it. Um, so an OR gate, right? If X is high or Y is, is high as a, is a binary 1, then the output will be 1, right? If they're both high, then the output is also 1. The difference between OR and exclusive OR is that if both X and Y are true, are binary 1, if both inputs are true, then the output for an exclusive OR will be false. So for exclusive OR, it has to be exactly one input that is true. It can't be both. It has to be exactly one that's true. Exclusive OR is very, very important for other things that we're going to see uh, as we go through um, the course. So that's why it's good to introduce it now. Um, there's a couple of other really important concepts on this slide that are worth talking about right now as well. Uh, you'll notice that on the right side of each of these logic gates, we see the output represented as an expression. So x and y are my inputs to the AND gate. x times y is the output to my AND gate. So we're going to use multiplication in this course to represent an AND operation. For an OR operation, we're going to use addition. So X and Y are my inputs. X plus Y is the output of an OR gate. We're going to use plus to represent OR. Um, and you can see exclusive OR is represented as a series of addition and multiplication. And for inversion, you see prime listed here. So X prime is going to be the opposite of X. Right? So if x is true, x prime is false. So those three symbols start to form um, Boolean algebra, which is going to be a, a, the topic of pretty much all of next week. Um, these are the first Boolean algebra expressions that we've actually seen in this course. There's going to be a lot more to come. Another important thing that you see here on this slide are timing diagrams. So here we see signals that change over time. Up at the top, we see signals for x and y. When the signal is low, that represents a binary 0, right? And when it's high, it represents a binary 1. So here you can see the inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So all four possible inputs are represented by these top two um, rows in the timing diagram. And then the remaining values down here, you can see, are the results of the AND or 
exclusive or an inverter gates so you can see that for example when um, X is low and Y is high that's 0 or 1 which is going to re return a 1 right when X is high and Y is high you see that X or Y is 1 but X exclusive or Y is 0 that's the difference you can see here clearly the, the difference between the two types of OR gates right we're going to spend a lot more time talking about timing diagrams in the next few weeks as well, but I think it's important to induce, introduce these concepts now. Um, another useful concept that you've probably already seen, uh, but also worth talking about, are truth tables. So here you can see the same information that was actually presented on the previous slide, uh, but perhaps in a, a easier to read format. So here we see the inputs listed, and then the output in this particular column. So 0 and 0 is 0, false and false is false, right? True and true is true. True or false is true, right? And so we'll, we'll be seeing truth tables coming up a lot um, in the coming weeks as well. Um, so that's our introduction to logic gates. These are the basic building blocks of all digital circuits. Um, it's very, very important for you to get used to how these logic gates work. And we're going to do some practice uh, in class to make sure that everybody's on the same page regarding these gates.